Dear friends, today we will speak about what is finalization of books of accounts at the year end. Important finalization entries to be passed, important reconciliation to be done, and important income tax and GST compliance to be done before year end closing of books of accounts. What is finalization of books of account? Finalization of books of account means to ensure that your books of accounts are truly and fairly updated and finalized, and preparation of financial statement in true and fair way for audit. Uh, for filing of income tax return and GST annual return as well. But before doing this, you have to be ensured that your books of accounts are truly prepared in such a way that all income tax, GST, and other legal portions have been properly complied. Importance of finalization of books of accounts in true and fair way. Finalization of books of account for current year will have an impact in the next seven years in connection with income tax and GST assessment. If your books of accounts are prepared truly and efficiently in good manner, then you will also obtain a true picture of your business. Either your business is earning projected profit and it will help in taking financial assistance from banks or other investors or government. Through proper accounts, you can take strategic decision as well as you can also compete with your business competitor. Important year and closing entry to be passed at the time of finalization of books of account to show a true and fair view. Entry for position for depreciation. Accountants are advised to make, make sure that in case of a company, proper depreciation as per Schedule 2 of the Companies Act 2013 has been recorded on fixed assets. Entry for position for taxation. Entry for position for accrued expense and statutory liabilities. Entry for accrued incomes. Important reconciliation to be done at the time of finalization of books of account to show a true and fair view. Bank reconciliation, AS, TS, 26 sales reconciliation with income, expenditure, purchase, sales, etc. in the books of account. Physical variation of closing stock as on 31st March and reconcile with the inventory register. Also, in the case of tax audit cases, we need to have quantity wise and item wise value of closing stock as on 31st March. Hence, company need to document this detail as on 31st March. Physical variation of fixed asset and reconcile with the fixed asset register as on 31st March. Collecting loan and FD statement. Accountants are advised to collect all running loans, fixed deposit, and accrued interest statement for the year from banks for reconciliation and to account accrued interest properly. Taking balance confirmation of all running parties. Accountants are advised to collect balance confirmation ledger of all Sunday creditors and Sunday debtors and reconcile uh, the balance with the books of account. This needs to be reconciled with the 26 years as well. Taking proof from employees against their investment mentioned in their declaration and a direct balance TDS. Accountants have tendency to direct TDS as per declaration filed by the employees in the beginning of financial year. But in many cases it has been found that employees fail to invest as mentioned in their declaration. NCT is advisable to collect all proof was mentioned in the declaration and recompute tax liability and direct balance TDS while making payment of salary for the month of March. Reconcile interbranch balances. Companies should reconcile interbranch balances and balance of subsidiary companies. Otherwise, uh, closing companies' books at the year end would not be show a true and fair view. Taking reinvestment sheet from employees. Accountants should take reimbursement sheet from all employees, including directors uh, related to financial uh, and record all expenses related to that uh, financial in that financial itself. It has been found in many cases that accountant fails to take these sheets timely and record these expenses in next financial. Other important uh, verification to be done at the time of finalization of accounts. Double check the expenses where TDS has been detected. In all cases where TDS has been detected on expenses, reconfirm the TDS applicability and take corrective action if needed. Also, it has been observed that company generally fail to deduct TDS on year-end portions of expense like audit fees, annual filing charges, etc. Company need to make sure that proper TDS has been deducted and paid in, in these cases. Check whether all the purchases which are for the business purpose are reflected in the accounts and, is, and reconciliation has been done with the various return. Check whether proper sales invoices have been raised for all sales made during the year. Check whether company has complied with 
no portions introduced in the year in company site, Tingandai site, and GCI Testra. Check whether all payments via cash, credit cards, debit cards for the personal purpose are reflected properly. Check whether there is any demand or refund received during the year. Adjustment have been done. Reconcile salary expenditure with the return submitted with the various departments such as PF and ESI. Rectify the internal audit observation if any. Check whether the labor laws have been properly complied. Payment or tax. In the case of adequate advance tax are not paid. Make sure the payment or balance tax at the earliest to avoid further interest under section 234B of England Act 1961. Record foreign exchange fluctuation properly. In the case of foreign uh, parties or assets or investment, where balance is outstanding or pending, ascertain foreign currency value as on 31st mark and apply to AS211 and record the fluctuation difference properly. Reconcile unconsumed challenge. Reconcile the unconsumed challenge as per traces as on 31st mark with the debit balance showing in the books. ESI or P of registration. If, if these registrations were not applicable earlier due to lower number of employees, please recheck their applicability and apply for registration under EPF ESC. If any time during the year, number of employees have exceeded the number 20 or 10 as the case may be. Record salary of directors. In many cases, especially in startup, we have observed that directors don't take salary properly during the year and take final call on this amount after the end of the financial year while filing their personal ITR later in July. Hence, the company ended up paying their TDS component with interest. Accountants are advised to account uh, the final amount as on the advice margin itself and pay TDS accordingly. Loan to directors or interested parties. Loan to directors or any other person uh, in whom directors is interested is prohibited by company side 2030 subject to certain exemption. Accountant needs to make sure the company is not providing or would not provide any such loan or guarantee. Transfer pricing. Please ensure that your books are aligned with the agreement executed between the holding company or subsidiary company or associate enterprises. Key invoice is mandatory. Now the companies and other entities having turn or above fiscal limit have to mandatorily issue key invoices. It is not uh, need to note down that ITC might not be available to a recipient if the supplier is not complying with e-invoicing. E-invoicing is mandatory from October 1st, 2022 for businesses whose aggregate turnover exists 10 core in any financial year from 2017-18 to 2021-22. Letter of undertaking. The LUT should be applied for the financial year on or before 31st month so that the export orders don't face any issue at the last moment. Tax residency certificate. In case if any foreign party deduct TDS or withholding tax of the company, please make sure that the TRC should be applied for the financier so that company can claim the benefit of DTA and award or reduce the TDS deduction. GST compliance checklist before finalizing the books of account. Before the financial statements are finalized, the taxpayer should undertake various checks and reconciliations. Outward supplies. Recognize the revenue from operation, other income as per financial statement and sale of fixed asset as per books of account with the GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B. In case of any differences, do re uh, requisite changes in the books of account or in the GST return as the case may be. Reconcile the debit notes and credit notes as per books with the GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B and difference if any shall be accounted for accounted for accordingly. In case of exempt supplies, ensure below supplies issued by the company and reported in the GST returns. In case of supply between related parties, verify whether provisions of section 15, violation of CGST Act 2070, read of the rule number 28 of the CGST rule 2070 is followed by the taxpayer. Reconcile invoices, credit notes, debit notes, transfer books with the invoice portal to ensure that IRN is generated for or P2B uh, exports and SEZ supplies. In case of export of goods, reconcile the shipping bills details with GSTR 1. This, this is necessary for claiming the refund of unutilized ITC or GST paid on export. In case of supply of services, reconciliation advances received and adjusted as per financials with the details in GST return and whether applicable tax has been discharged on the same. 
calculate the aggregate turnover of the company as per GST law and reconcile the same with the aggregate turnover uh, generated by system on GST and portal. Aggregate turnover is also crucial for various other GST portions such as applicability of composition scheme, QRMB scheme, number of HSN or SAC code applicability extra. Invade supplies. Reconcile the ITC available as per GSTR 2B with the ITC available as per financial and GSTR 3B. If any difference, appropriate action, availment or reversal shall be undertaken. Communicate with the vendors for supplies not reflecting GSTR 2B of the company. ITC in respect of invoices not reflecting GSTR 2B is not allowed. If there is any exempt income undertaken during the financial year, ITC reversal shall be recalculated and considered in accordance with the Rule 42 and 43 of CGST rules at the end of year. Any additional reversal required shall be accounted for in GST 3B within prescribed period. Alternatively, if excess ITC has been reversed by the company during the year, such excess ITC can be reclaimed in March GST 3B. Variation of creditors aging report to identify invoices wherein payment is due for more than 180 days and ITC claimed in respect of supplies from such vendors shall be reversed. The ITC reversed by the company can be reclaimed upon making payment to the vendor. To identify the ineligible ITC recorded in books and ensure same is expenses of or capitalized as the case may be. If such ineligible ITC has been availed and utilized, the same shall be reversed along with interest at the rate of 18%. Reverse charge mechanism supplies. To identify all expenses subject to RCM, director setting fee, legal expense extra, and reconcile the same with RCM liability discharge in GSTR 3B. The differential liability, if any, shall be discharged along with interest as per time of supply provisions. Reconcile the foreign expenditure as per financial with the import of services disclosed in the GSTR return to verify the self-invoice issued for supplies subject to RCM provision. ITC availed in respect of RCM transaction shall be equal to or less than GST liability discharge under RCM. Additional points for consideration. In case of year and discount given by the tax to its agent, the GST impact of same is duly accounted for in the books of GST return. To verify whether export proceeds are received in convert on foreign exchange accompanies by FIRC or BRCs. In case of goods sent for job work, Ensure job work, challenge and eBay bills was generated for movement of goods. In case inputs are uh, uh, lying with a job worker for more than prescribed time, GST need to be discharged on site. Reconcile the GST receivable or payable as per financial with the close uh, balance as per, as per electronic credit ledger on the GST and portal. Similarly, reconcile the GST cash ledger in the financial with the electronic cash ledger on the GST and portal. Identify the common expense incurred for related or distinct person on which ITC has been availed by the taxpayer. The taxpayer need to cross-charge such expenses to the respective entities or GSTN or the same entity on the basis of turnover or such a reasonable method of allocation as applicable to the industry. Thank you. Have a nice day.